purpose is how I can raise up ordinary men, turning them to become supernatural beings, financial apostles, making life better, bringing people from the dungeon of sin, bringing them into the faith, planting their feet, and raising them. Chapter 3 from verse 1 through 10. Now, Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. Verse 2. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful to ask arms of them that entered into the temple. We seen Peter and John about to go in to the temple asked an arms. Verse 4. And Peter fastening his eyes upon him with John said, look on us. Now verse 5. And he gave heed unto them expecting to receive something of them then peter said silver and gold have i none but such as i have i give thee in the name of jesus christ of nazareth rise up and walk verse 7 and he took him by the right hand and lifted him up and immediately his feet and ankle and bones received strength verse 8 and he leaping up stood and walked and entered in with them into the temple walking and leaping and praising God. Verse 9 and all the people saw him walking and praising God. Verse 10 and they knew that it was he which sat for hams at the beautiful gate of the temple and they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. Now we we'll read the last scripture. We knit them together. Psalm 24, verse 7. Lift up your heads, all ye gates, and ye be, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Let's read it all together. Lift up your heads, all ye gates, and be ye lifted up. Ye everlasting doors and the king of glory shall come in. Sit down on your enemy's head. In this first service, we deal squarely with the word and prophecy as God will help us. Can we give Jesus a clamp offering? So in today's service, we have two messages as God will lead and help us. I want to share with us on what I titled Beware of Gatekeepers. Tell your neighbor, Beware of Gatekeepers. If that's the only word you can preach to your neighbor, I want you to vocalize if you are not local. Vocalize it. Beware of Gatekeepers. Shout it like thunder. Shout it well. Let me hear you well. Say it again, beware of gatekeepers. Mm, gatekeepers. Beware of them. Mm. The Bible says now, Peter and John went together together into the temple at the hour of prayer, at the ninth hour in Acts chapter 3. He says, a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried in verse 2. He said, a certain man, lame from his mother womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful. He a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask for hands of them entered into the temple the man was laid daily daily
daily every day they will carry this man and lay him at the entrance of the temple and this church when the bible says church was the church is a beautiful church not just an ugly church a beautiful church a church with a different but there was an up for a church to be beautiful if we can classify a church like an hotel it was a five star church it had all the facilities that a modern church should have now it means for such church to be beautiful it means the people and the members are wealthy members they were not just roadside members they were members shakers and movers of the society were attending that ministry that church ministers governors president vice president the church was actually a beautiful church but there was an ugly situation an ugly and the ugly situation was not at the back of the church it was at the entrance of the church I keep saying I, I keep saying this to people that when you expect too much from a church you will always see a question mark there is no perfect church anywhere it is when Jesus come that will become perfect did you hear what I say there is no perfect church anywhere it is when Jesus comes. That's why when a pastor brags about his ministry, that my ministry is the best in Nigeria, in Africa, in the world, I preach the best, it's a lie. Because there is no perfect church anywhere. What do I mean? There is no church where there are no question marks. If the pastor is perfect, fine. What is going to happen with the pastors around him? Jesus was a perfect master. He pastored 12 disciples who are his pastors under him. And out of the 12 disciples, we have one called Judas Iscariot, who was a thief and a betrayer. We have one called Thomas, who was the one who denied him three times. I mean, Peter, who was the one who denied him three times. We have Thomas, who is a professional unbeliever. That was the creator of the heaven and earth with 12 members. 12 members. 12 members. And out of the 12 members, three of them had question mark. So imagine if we have if we have 24 members here. How many Peter do we have? We have two Peter. We have two Judas. We have two Thomas. If we have 48, how many Peter? How many Judas? Four. How many Peter? Four. How many Thomas? Four. So there is no perfect church anywhere. It is when Jesus comes, the Bible says we will be like him. It is when he comes that we are going to be like him. So when you are judging a church by what people say from the entrance, you might not enter into the church. A lot of people have been deterred from entering into a beautiful church because of the ugly situation by the church. There are people that are eyesore. There are people that are a barricade to destiny development in life. And they have been positioned by your wayside. And all they are to do is to disfigure the beautiness of God in your life. I talk to somebody here they have been assigned to make your beautiful life to have question mark so there is no beautiful church anywhere without an ugly situation can I say this every house have a toilet did you hear that one I know somebody is not hearing me I say every house have what? a toilet that your own is not smelling is because it is well clean I said that your own is not smelling it is because it is strategically located master bedroom by the corner 
every house has a toilet. Before you criticize somebody, clean up your own toilet. Clean up your own restroom. Oh, you do not get what I'm saying. Is somebody get what I'm saying? Say, I hear you. Say, I hear you. So, when somebody is talking anyhow, tell him, sir, excuse me, before you judge me, clean up your own toilet. Can I talk to somebody here? My life is not the worst. I am not the worst lady in Nigeria. I am still better. There are ladies that have aborted 24 and they are standing. They have killed 24 children and they look innocent. But you don't see them and they have tied their a tie. They look like Mary, the mother of Jesus. But it does not mean they don't have toilet. I read a book and it says the worst set of people cover themselves in the emblem of holiness. People that look too sanctimonious, that try to tell you that I don't have mistake, I don't have error, that are highly hypercritical, they are the people with the worst kind of restroom. Can I talk to somebody here? Before you judge me, excuse me, clean your toilet. Can I talk to somebody? Shut fire! Oh, that's not where I'm going to. Mm. So a gate is a barrier, like a door, that is used to close an opening in a fence or a wall outside the building. A gate is a barrier, like a door. Or a fence that is used to close an opening in a fence or a wall outside the building. A gate is used to secure a house. A gate is used to restrict movement. A gate is used to secure a house. A gate is used to restrict movement. Every true gate has a gatekeeper. Every true gate has a gatekeeper. Hello? Hello? Be it scientific or manual. Hello? Even though the gate is computerized, it is regulated by somebody. There are some of you, your gatekeepers have gone digital. They are not analog. They got that at which they are using. So a gate is used to secure a house, a fence. Then the gate is there. And you cannot assess any house without a gate. I'm not talking about a house that you can just have open access. You can come boldly and enter. I'm talking about a real house. And gates are set for security purpose. Now, when the gate man, the, as, as useless and simple and irrelevant a gatekeeper, which is a gate man, is the gate man Holds the life of the ogre. A lot of big men will give out money to people outside, but will not take care of their security men. And they don't know that their life is in the hands of the man that guides you. The man that keeps your gate. That when you are sleeping in the night, I did security work. I was a gas mark. Work, I worked in gas mark here in Abuja. So I know what it means to stay overnight, to watch over the gate, to watch over, to make sure that movements are restricted. Am I talking to somebody here? Some of you, your gatekeepers are your enemies. Some of you have met people who are to keep your destiny. You have put important secret in the hands of your enemies they can be frenemies the greatest havoc that can ever happen to a man 
is to be in Abuja physically, but spiritually, you are outside the gate of Abuja. Some of you, where you are coming into Abuja, the enemy have locked the gate of Abuja. You are outside spiritually, but physically you are inside. And what does that signify? It means that no matter how you labor in Abuja, you are outside the gate. And you can prosper. You can buy a house when you are outside the gate. You can marry when you are outside the gate. The gatekeepers have restricted you. They say you can't come to the city. That's why you have spent 27 years in Abuja, nothing to show. You have spent 30 years in America, nothing to show. You have been in South Africa for 10 years, but the gate of South Africa is closed against you. When gates are closed against you, you walk like elephant and you reap like ant. When gatekeepers frustrate your life, they make you to have idea and frustrate the ideas. You are you are a beautiful lady. You can't walk figure eight, but you are outside Abuja. That's why nobody sees you. You pass men ten times and do all the finger, every walk, and nobody see you. Why? Because you are outside. Some people are entering a nation, but before they enter the nation, they have been there is a spiritual decree that have been passed against them. Stay outside. Behave like an outcast. Never, you will never carry anything out of this country. So they labor for 40 years, 30 years. They can't come back home because there is nothing to show. It is the work of gatekeepers. Who are gatekeepers? Gatekeepers will restrict people from coming to you. When helpers are coming and say, come, 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 come. Let us help him. They will stop them. A man want to marry you, they will stop him. Gatekeepers restrict helpers, destiny helpers. Gatekeepers, I'm talking about the mission of gatekeepers. Number one, they restrict destiny helpers. So, one of their mission is to restrict your movement. To restrict helpers from coming. Have you heard people make promise to you and yet they can't help you? You have asked, this man have the money, why will he not help me? It is the duty of the mission of the gatekeepers. Their mission is to make sure that you remain where you are. They overlap and overleap their security measure for you. They want to restrict everything that will make you progress. A man promised you that he wants to marry you. He has given a date to see your parents, but he changes his mind. That's gatekeepers. They are satisfied to see you remain that way. Gatekeepers can keep the womb of a woman, hang it on a mango tree, and make sure for 20 years she does not have a baby. They are satisfied to see her cry every day. She be is marriage, marry, but you will not know the joy of marriage. That's gatekeepers. They can keep you in the university for seven years while all your colleagues have graduated for a course of four years. You are writing and writing. You can try to finish to go to law school. They can keep you there, frustrate you for ten years. You have graduated, but you have not been called to bar. Why? gatekeepers they can make a pastor to work for 10 years without anything to show church not growing gatekeepers this man was carried daily daily they carried him every day and put him by the entrance of the gate that's their mission Number two mission of gatekeepers is to take 
take away your destiny, your glory. To take away your destiny, your glory, your prosperity. To take away everything. They were placing, they put the man by the entrance of the gate and the man cannot walk because he was lame from his mother's womb. So who was going to buy something for him? Who was collecting the hands? Why were they bringing him? For how long? For years. Because they were profiting from his disability. As far as they are concerned, the man left to finish your life. Be careful. Don't say I am rich. You are rich, but it does not matter. Your life is just like a needle in the hands of gatekeepers. A man was always abusing his driver. He will insult the boy. The boy took him in the midst of express. In the bush. And it was already night. And parked the car. And said, oh guy, resign. Take your key. Drive yourself home. I said, take your key. They were in the forest. No place. The man can't even put gear. And was insulting the young man. The young man said, no problem. I, today, I resign. I will use my leg to con continue the journey. Say, take your key. Thank you, sir. I don't want to collect allowance and salary. The man neither he said, please, please, I will add your salary. I double it. He said, no, I don't want. I triple it. He said, no, I dash you the car. I want to go. I resign. Don't underestimate people who serve you. Don't underestimate your cooks, your servant, your house help. Don't underestimate them. They are gatekeepers. They can either protect you or shoot you. Depends on how you undo them. Money is not evil. It's neutral. It, has, it does not have a mind of its own. It depends on the user. Some people get this money, use it to pay ayahs as Use it for bomb blasts. Some use it to help widows, orphans, helpless. So you see? That's how it is. There are people that are neutral around you. It is what you put into them that they will give out. It's garbage in, garbage out. Giggle. Can I talk here? Say, oh Lord, oh Lord. deliver me from gatekeepers. So, what was the condition of the man by the gate? The man was lame right from bed, number one. The man was lame right. I don't know how your condition is. I don't know, maybe it's from bed. It will change today. I did not hear the amen well. I say it will change today. Number two, there were special people who carry him daily to the entrance of the temple to ask for arms. They were special. Special squad. Beware of people who are trying to help you, but you think they are helping you, but they are actually benefiting from you. They cry with you, but what they get from you is stronger than the sympathy. Be very careful of those people you carry your condition to tell. Your heart was broken by a man. You went to meet another man. He, he, I'm broken. I'm finished. The man too. Say sorry. Sorry. Heart broken. You don't know if this one is even worse than the one that broke your heart. You say, oh, Jumbu is the only man. He's trying to benefit. He wants to get his own national cake too. So by the time he's through with you, he also dumb you. So you now have double heartbreak. How do you couple that one together? Beware of people who say they want to help you, but they are profiting from your disability. Special helpers. People who show special concern. Oh, he's wicked. Why did he do this to you? They cry with you after they hear you. But they go behind and they tell people, say, don't mind her. Do you know she has HIV? 
But they cry with you. They cry out. Say, I, will, I, will, I will take you somewhere. But yet they cry. They go behind. Don't marry her. Are you the new man that I want to marry? You don't know. She have HIV. A CD count, I can tell you. There are special helpers who are destroyers. You will think they are helping you, but they are not actually helping you. Why will they bring the man to the entrance of the church and not take the man inside the church? They took the man. They know how powerful that church looks like, but they will not enter. There are people inside a church who run down a man of God and yet will not leave the church and yet will be destroying the church I'll be paid by the church but they are destroying the system they will eat you small they will blow breeze they will eat you small they will blow breeze they are dangerous every kind of help that is made to destroy you because the help will not change your condition. It will only profit from your condition. You went to seek them for help. Your condition have not changed, but they are profiting from your condition. It is only in the church members can go and give a native doctor five million and don't feel pain. But when they come to church, they can drop offering of five hundred of, of five naira, and they feel odd and ask, "How does the pastor account for that offering?" It's only in the church. I've seen people travel from US, pay maybe half a million just to come here. But when they come to see the main pastor, they came to see, they can spend seven hundred thousand, give airline, give other people. Give up, but the church that is their center of interest, they cannot even give the church even ten nera. That's to show how they value the airline, value every other thing. But the reason why they came, they can't even show to the man's life. The value system is so bad. They can the hotel we collect, airline we collect. Taxi transport we collect, but God will not get one. They can prepare for a journey and will never prepare for God, who is the end point of that product. I have seen people spend almost 800,000 to get here, but they can't drop a seed of 1,000 naira to God. So God begins to speak to me, he says, Son, my children know how to give to the system of the war, but they cannot give to my system. If you can fly first class, half a million, you get to, to Lagos, another business class, you get here, you are in an executive suit, but you get to the house of God, the main purpose why you came, you can't be a partner. You can't even sow a seed. Offering time, you just look for one squeeze, five nera, and drop in the offering. God, look at you. Accountant in the heavens. Angel, begin to take the balance sheet of this man. Then God said, he had just spent about 850,000 for the secular war. But when it comes to me, he has nothing to give to me. That's why I understand why some people enter the house of God and God look at their value system for him and know that it is weak. And God said, no, no. If you cannot follow me, but you can follow the war, I don't think you are prepared for me. There must, it must come to a point in time where we don't need to be told by a man of God to sow his but we understand it's an obligation. Church is quiet. Somebody shot fire. fire. Shot fire. fire. Shot fire. fire. So they did not take him inside the church. So who are gatekeepers? Gatekeepers will, can attend the church and still criticize the pastor and prevent others from coming into the church. 
They are everywhere. They are everywhere. They will attend the ministry. You see them there, they say, you know, I'm the pro I'm the I'm I'm the security, I'm the agent, I'm that, I'm the CEO, I'm the chief O, I'm the HOD, I'm that and that, I'm the director of finance and social affairs in the ministry, in the church. They will they will braggadociously introduce their profile, but they will still destroy the system of the ministry. 90 percent of of the reason why a lot of church is not growing in this part of the world in Africa is caused by gatekeepers. 